Hey guys, um, this sermon is called The Other Side of Quarantine. The reason I didn't label my sermon before is I didn't know you could label them. <laughs> so now I'm just going to start titling them as I, like I used to, now that I know that you can title them. Although every time they said, do you want to title this? And I said, no, I just didn't even know you could title it. But anyway, that's an aside. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for what you're going to do and what you're going to say. And Lord Jesus, I pray that every heart, every mind, every spirit is open to what your spirit is going to say, oh Lord, I pray that you will just go down to the very marrow of our bones and fabric of our beings, Lord, and do what only you can do in the name of Jesus. Jesus, touch us in a wonderful way. Do it, Lord Jesus. Heal us, restore us, deliver us in whatever place that you, that you want to today lord god i pray lord god that every single person that is and will listen to me lord god i pray that they will receive something from this word that you've given me lord god use me i'm your humble servant speak to me speak through me in the name of jesus amen i give you all the praise and glory hi guys so this is kind of a weird uh, sermon title. It's called um, "On the Other Side." Of, it's called "The Other Side of Quarantine." Um, I was watching um, uh, church today. And as we're often doing now, because we're all under, um, some of us are under quarantine, and some places are starting to open up. Some places, like my city, op opened up, and now they have to close back down again because the cases with COVID got so high. And some places are actually um, opening up in the states in Canada and other places and the church I usually watch today was the first Sunday that people were allowed to come in the sanctuary and it was weird for me uh, watching it it was so weird because I always thought that I'd be happy and jovial um, to see people's heads again or whatever, although I I always watch online, but today I had mixed feelings. It was weird. I was happy to see people, but I was like, oh, I'm, uh, when the sanctuary fills up again, I'm going to, <laughs> I'm going to miss empty rooms. And... I'm going to miss the, the empty empty sanctuary. And I thought, why am I feeling this way? And he says, um, and the Lord said to me, it's because uh, you're going to miss the um, the lesson that quarantine taught. Uh, you and that ministry it was like a, a sig it was like a signal for you that things are going back to normal and there's there's a segment of there's a part of you Rachel that wants things to go back to normal but there's a part of you that really doesn't that's enjoying all of this and he said to me he said um, things may look like they're going back to quote-unquote normal, but things will never be normal again. 
He says, don't worry. The pastors that will, will take the lessons that they learn and it will be totally different. It won't be the same as it once was. Not even, not only with precautions and whatever, but in this, I'm going to develop systems. I'm going to develop things in the church uh, will be changing and and he also said to me that tell them to not forget the lessons as things open up again do not forget the lessons that he's taught you in quarantine the lessons of how to spend time with family the lessons of importance of your friends, the lessons of how to manage your finances, or the lessons about how to do things virtually. I was watching a very famous conference um, this this weekend. Well, I've never and I've never attended that conference before. Always heard of it, but never. I've got the chance to attend and go, and for this this year, for the for, for the first time, I was able to attend and go virtually, and it was such a blessing for me. And I was like, Lord, when quarantine happens next year, I won't be able to go, or there'll be a registration fee. And and he's like, Don't worry, I've got you. I will, I will make it so um, that you can go. It, it looks like it's going to be the same with churches and conferences and all that stuff. But he, the Lord is going to be shifting things in this season. Now that we've, uh, that some of us are coming out of quarantine and some of us are going back in the quarantine. He's, it's going to be rocky for a while, but he's saying in the shifting, in this changing thing, um, it will be rocky for a while, but it will settle into what he wants it to be. And what he wants it to be is not what it is right now. He's going to every major pastor that you know or every man and woman of God that you know he's going to start revealing things that are essential he's going to start uh, giving them dreams and visions and different things that he wants to do and change and all of that because it may look the same, but it's not going to end up the same. Because you know what? Because um, some of the things in in church we, we thought we needed, but we don't need, and um, some of the some of the style of doing church is going to change, and it will look um, the kind of way he wants. God wants it to look. He, um, I was watching someone um, the other day who said, sometimes we're so busy looking at what God used to do, doing things the way God used to do them, and we look for God in that certain place that we don't even realize that he's moved, that he wants to do something totally different. So in this season, as we come out of quarantine, go back into quarantine, and see churches fill up again, he is going to be shifting things more than ever. You think that um, in quarantine he shifted things? No, no, no. He gave us time to assess things, and he gave us time to see what it's like without people in the room, but now he's really going to sh shift things and put new programs in place at churches and change 
the way things are done, change the way sermons are done, change the way worship is done. And he's going to do this church-wide. And he's also, I really feel that he said that he's going to do this in people's lives. You think in quarantine was difficult? Well, get ready for the shift because as he shifts, because shifting is always difficult because you're changing into something else. But that shifting, he says, he says, yes, Lord. The shifting in your life is for your good. The shifting in your life is for your good and it will show his glory. The shifting in quarantine is for your good. And the the shifting in your life will show his glory. Now as you come out of quarantine or go back into quarantine or what whatever stage you are at, um, it's all going to be for his purpose. And he's going to be start, starting to reveal things, starting to put together things, starting to do things that you just have no idea. And for some ministries, he's already doing things. Some ministries, they're giving more, they're reaching. Every major ministry I have um, seen has said, this quarantine season has been a season of exponential growth for their ministry, every major ministry I've seen. And now that we're, now that churches are starting to fill up again, he's going to um, make what was behind the scenes in front of the scenes, and he, and he may change certain aspects of how we do things. It's going to be incredible not only for churches, but individual lives. He, now that the shops, well, shops here have closed down again, um, but now that, now that things are starting to open up other places, he may teach you how to spend your money more or how, how to spend, no, how to spend your money more wisely, not to just spend, spend, spend. Um, he may have you put strategies in place for your kids and how to entertain them. He's, he's going to sh change things and shift things in all our lives. He's already started, but as this quarantine is starting to and he's beginning to shift things into how he wants them to be and that shift maybe that shift may be rocky for a while but it's going to come out for his glory and he says this this time in your life of not working or one week you're working, one week you're not, one week everything's open, the next week the government shuts everything down. This time of unrest is for his glory. Not that unrest is for his glory, but he's using it to draw things out of you that you have no idea that that he wants to use in you. And as you, as this difficult time of yes, no, maybe is happening, 
just I'm just here to let you know that he is still in control that he still has you it was so easy in quarantine because we were all home and it wasn't easy some of us have lost jobs some of us the kids had to go to school we were all in the same boat but now that some places are opening up some places had to um clo open again some places had to close again we're just feeling a little shaky because we're all kind of in limbo like what's going to happen and the Lord wants me to tell you that whatever happens wherever you are wherever you find yourself wherever your kids find themselves wherever your church finds themselves whatever happens God is still God and he is still on the throne he just wants me to tell you that he is still God and he's still on the throne and he's God this may be a, a little uncertain for you because you don't know if it'll close next week or next month or when they'll come up with a vaccine but God is still God regardless of vaccine no vaccine school no school church no church um, you know whatever happens he wants me to to tell you that he is still God and he will not never leave you nor forsake you and he will never leave your church nor forsake your church regardless of what's happening and he wants me to tell preachers out there to keep preaching, keep speaking the word of God. It doesn't matter what is going on, whether the government next week uh, demands that uh, your church needs to close down or whether your church is still closed down, we're not open yet. What do we do? I'm not used to this Facebook thing, so what do we do? We're losing members just keep keep preaching stay in the fight stay in the fight don't give up on the fight don't give up on your on on his members don't give it up on the members he's given you because um it it's very hard when you have when you have a large church with many campuses it's it's not simpler, but it's a little easier in some aspects. But when you're pastoring just a hundred people, a hundred seniors on a Sunday, and they don't know how to work Facebook unless they have grandchildren, and even if they do, most of them still don't know. So you're wondering, what do I do? Church is open now, but it may not be open next week. Keep on fighting, keep on preaching, keep on keep on fighting the good fight of faith. If if you need to uh have a class online about how to use Facebook and how to use Zoom or you know, like to get your congregation of fifty people, a hundred people, web savvy, do that. God has called you Sir, ma'am, and you can't stop now. Keep fighting. Keep preaching. It doesn't matter what the government does. It doesn't matter uh, whether they come up with a vaccine this year or not. What matters is that the call remains the same. And that goes for anyone. That goes for anyone under the sound of my voice. No matter what happens around you, the call remains the same. The call remains the same when you're, whether you're speaking to thousands of people with like 20-odd uh, campuses or you're speaking to 50 people. The call remains the same whether you're in the boardroom or whether you're, um, whether you're a real estate agent. 
the call remains the same whether you're a school teacher or a construction worker. God has called you to be in whatever sphere of influence you are. And you don't have to be a pastor to be called. Whatever career he blesses you with, whether whatever career he blesses you with, Sir, ma'am, you, you were called and gifted to do that. Do it with your whole heart. Do it for his glory. Do it with excellence. It doesn't matter what it is. Do it with excellence um, so that men may see your good works. works. Not to be vain or whatever, but to show that you are a child of God and and God does things well. And yeah, he said, whatever season you're in, whatever's going on in your life right now, just, just know that he is there and he will never leave you. And he has still called you. It doesn't matter what's going on, what the government decides to do, to do whatever. He is still God. And he also wants me to tell you, he has unfathomable love for you. He has, un God has an unfathomable love for you. And that love will will carry you through if you let it. He's saying to me right now, tell them not to fight my love. Tell them not to fight my love. Don't fight the love of God. Don't fight what he's trying to give you. Don't fight what was there before. Reach for what's here now. Don't fight it wanting what was there before. Because what was there before is gone. Reach for what God has for you now. He's got so much in store for you now. Don't look at your past. Concentrate on what he has for you now. Concentrate on the present, meaning the, the time and the gift so both meaning of presence. Concentrate on the gifts he's given you in quarantine. He's developed gifts in you which you didn't know you have. So concentrate on those gifts. And know that he gave them to you. And know that if submitted to him, they will rock, rock the world. Even with your children, you may not think that you are called to be a mom, but if God has given you a child, he's called you to be a mom. He's gifted you to be not only a mom, but those kids' mom. He's gifted you to be the mom of that autistic child. He's gifted you to be the dad of that um of that ch child who is who is strong-willed. He's given you tools. And he's saying, listen to him so you can, you can, um, you can guide that child in the right direction. He knows your child. He loves your child. And a lot of you are frustrated because your children are not doing well at online school. But he's saying, just listen to me for directions on how to raise that child, on tools, how to get that child to learn and listen to you. Don't give up on that child. God still has a destiny. And sometimes it can be hard to see it, but just per persevere. 
Um, don't be afraid to go in, in the fire with your children. He He's saying this to me right now. I don't have children, but, but he's saying, don't be... Don't be afraid to go in the fire with your children, to labor with your children. And there's a friendship. There's a person with a friendship right now. You're, you're wanting to so give up on this friendship because this person uh, seems to not care about anything. You care about them more than they care about themselves. And there's a part in the Bible where Paul says labor with one another labor with one another and that's what the Lord is saying now he's saying labor with that friend labor with that sister labor with that brother he's saying two things he's saying to listen and labor he's saying listen and labor um, this week, I don't know who this is for, but this week, God will give you specific instructions about how to handle that friend, how to handle that nephew, how to handle that niece, how to handle that child. And he's saying, I need you to listen. And then I need you to labor. I don't know why he's going here, but he's saying, I need you to listen and I need you to labor. So he's saying, don't give up. I need you to labor with them, with, with them which I have given you. And don't give up. And he says, I need you to listen for specific instructions. And those instructions may come through people or they may come through the Bible. You may be reading the Bible this week and it may jump out at you that specific instructions or you may be talking to a friend this week about this issue and the Lord may have given them knowledge about how to deal with that person so he's saying listen and labor Lord Jesus thank you for your word today I bless you and I praise you for what you're doing um, I'm I'm your humble servant, ready to do your will, God. And I thank you for for what you're doing, what you're about to do in the name of Jesus. Amen. So guys, I will see you soon. We this morning. While it is day, spreading the word of the heart of the world along the way. said one last thing he said he said I've been laboring with that person to get them to know me by you giving up on them it will set their salvation back but if you continue to labor with them it will minister to them and they will come to me so you're you're the key to that person coming to know me. So labor with them. I don't know who that is for, 
But the Lord is just giving me stuff and giving me stuff. I will see you later.